mic yeah. check. Mic hey, check. Yeah. One, two. Check one, two. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Check one, two. Check one, two. Do, 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 do. Please welcome Michigan AFL-CIO President Ron Bieber. Hello, Warren, Michigan. Give me a honk, love it. Hello, Macomb County. And welcome to Michigan, Senator Bernie Sanders. <laughs> what an honor it is to be here this afternoon with all of you to help elect Joe Biden as our next president of the United States. Let me tell you something about Joe. Joe Biden knows how to get people back to work. Joe Biden helped President Obama guide this country through the Great Recession. He helped save jobs right here in Macomb County by helping to rescue the U.S. auto industry. And now he's got a plan to get this pandemic under control and build our economy back better, especially in Michigan. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris know we can't just go back to the way things were before the virus. We have to build back better. They'll create millions of good paying union jobs and reward work, not wealth. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will make sure that we treat all American workers as essential all the time, not just in times of crisis. Last month, Joe was right here in Macomb County, I know because I was there, and he laid out a policy to close the Trump offshoring loophole and replace it with a Biden offshoring penalty that penalizes companies that move jobs overseas. And Joe will go further by creating a Make It in America tax credit that rewards companies that expand manufacturing here at home. And that is big here in Macomb County. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, we're gonna need your help to elect Joe. Voting has never been easier or more accessible. Thanks to the wisdom of the voters in Michigan in 2018 by passing that ballot proposal. 
There's more ways to vote early than ever before. Go to your clerk's office today. Wait a minute, it's five o'clock, they might be closed, but go tomorrow and vote. It's a one-stop shop where you can get registered and vote right then and there. Or you can request an absentee ballot at IWillVote.com and then return it by mail or drop it at your clerk's office or one of their official drop boxes. But please make a plan to vote early and get your folks, friends and folks and neighbors and dogs, anyone you can find to as well. I didn't mean dogs, but anyone who's legal to vote. We're gonna need everyone to vote to elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And now friends, it is my honor and privilege to introduce someone who has fought tirelessly for working families for a long, long time. You pick the issue and he has been there with us, standing shoulder to shoulder, fighting to save the middle class in this country and shrink the gap between the ultra rich and everyone else. And he's standing with us again because he knows that the only way for working people to make gains is by, by defeating Donald Trump and electing Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And with that, Macomb County, let's make some noise for a true champion for workers, Senator Bernie Sanders. <laughs> does with the Michigan AFL-CIO. Let me thank all of you for being here. I have done many rallies in my life, but this is the first time I've been asked to look at a parking lot full of cars. But you all look great anyhow. And let me begin by wishing the President and the First Lady and all of the staff at the White House who've come down with the COVID-19 virus a full and speedy recovery. And I wish the same for my colleagues in the Senate and most importantly, for the hundreds of thousands of Americans who are struggling right now with that terrible disease, which has taken over 200,000 lives in our country including 7,000 right here in Michigan. What the last few days have told us is that if there was ever any doubt, it should now be clear that no one, no one is safe from the pandemic. It doesn't matter if you are a frontline worker in a hospital, and I want to take this opportunity to thank our medical personnel, the doctors and the nurses, for the extraordinary work they have done to put their lives on the line to save our lives. Thank you, medical personnel. But it doesn't matter if you are an essential worker at a supermarket, if you're a worker at a packing house or a bus driver. And it doesn't matter if you are the President of the United States or his campaign manager or his press secretary or his close advisors. Each and every one of us is vulnerable and we will remain vulnerable until there is a vaccine or a perfected cure. That is the reality, and there is no way 
of getting away from that. There are some who say that we have got to make a choice between having a strong economy and protecting the American people from this terrible disease. I disagree. The truth is that we will never have a strong economy so long as this terrible pandemic continues to surge as it is today. We will never have a strong economy if people are afraid to go to work, afraid to go to school, afraid to shop, afraid to go to a restaurant, or afraid to do all of the things that we have always done throughout our lives. We will never have a strong economy unless we get this pandemic under control. Is the solution to this crisis to shut down the economy and lock everybody in their homes? No, it is not. We can keep our country moving forward if we do it in a way that is disciplined, not dangerous, that is responsible, not reckless. And now I want to take a moment to ask you some very simple but enormously important questions. I think maybe the most important questions that we can ask ourselves right now. <clears throat> and that is, which candidate for president has shown that he will be disciplined, that he will be responsible, that he will do his best to protect the people around him as we deal with this pandemic? And the answer is Joe Biden. Which candidate has made it clear that he will develop policies which are based on science, not politics, and that he will seek the advice of the best scientists and doctors in our country and around the world in order to effectively combat and defeat this pandemic? And the answer is, that candidate is Joe Biden. Which candidate for president will develop strong national protocols and guidelines and model the behaviors we all need to engage in to keep our families, co-workers, and our neighbors safe? And the answer is, Joe Biden. And I want you to think about this one because I don't think this is a difficult one to answer. Which candidate for president has the temperament to see us through this unprecedented moment, the worst public health crisis in over a hundred years. Which candidate has the temperament to see us through this crisis? And I don't think there is any doubt that the answer is Joe Biden. And my friends, that is exactly why we need Joe Biden as our next president. And let me say a word about the economy, something that impacts every man, woman, and child in our country. And let me be very blunt and lay it right out there. The working class of America today is in more desperation right now than at any time since the Great Depression of the 1930s. Today, as we speak, 
tens of millions of our fellow citizens here in Michigan, in Vermont, all over this country have lost their jobs as a result of the pandemic. They have lost their incomes. They have lost their health insurance. They have depleted their life savings. They cannot afford to pay their rent or their mortgages. They cannot afford to put food on the table for their kids. And they are going deeper and deeper into debt as the economic meltdown continues. And my Republican colleagues can spin it any way they want, but that is the economic reality of America today. Tens and tens of millions of our people are hurting. Today, the percentage of Americans who don't have jobs is at its highest level in 45 years. While tens of millions of Americans who do have jobs continue to work at starvation wages. And as bad as the economy has been in general, it has been far, far worse for our African American and Latino neighbors. During this pandemic, nearly 60% of Latino families and 55% of African American families have either experienced a job loss or a pay cut, and that is devastating. But here is a point to be made that is not made often enough, and that is today not everyone in America is hurting. While the middle class is being devastated and poverty is growing, we are witnessing a massive increase in income and wealth inequality. Over the, over the past six months during this pandemic, and I want you all to hear this, 643 billionaires, not a whole lot of people, have seen their wealth increase by $845 billion. In other words, while 30 million Americans have lost their jobs, while 12 million Americans have lost their health insurance, while 29 million Americans are struggling to put food on the table, while 40 million Americans face evictions, the very, very richest people in this country are becoming phenomenally richer. That is not acceptable to Joe Biden, and it is not acceptable to me or the American people. And the truth is that today, in America, we have more income and wealth inequality than at any time since the Gilded Age of the 1920s. Very, very rich get much richer. Middle class struggles, and poor people go hungry and homeless. And let us be clear, despite what you may have heard, the economic crisis we are experiencing today did not begin with the pandemic it only grew worse with the pandemic. Now, I know the president would not agree with me, but let me get him straight. It was not a good economy when, before the pandemic, over half the American people were working paycheck to paycheck. That is not a strong economy. It was not a good economy when 87 million Americans were uninsured or underinsured, when 68,000 of our people died every year because they cannot afford to go to a doctor when they get sick, and when half a million people go bankrupt because of medically-related debt. 
It was not a good economy when over 40 million workers in America were earning starvation wages of less than $15 an hour. It was not a good economy when half of older workers, people 55, 60 years of old, had no retirement savings, no money in the bank in order to prepare for their retirement. And it was not a good economy when over half a million Americans were homeless, including many veterans who put their lives on the line to defend us. But this we must make clear. It was not a good economy for working families, but it was a great economy for the billionaires, and it has become even better for them during this pandemic. But truth be told, the economy has not been good for the working class of this country for decades. Since 1990, while the top 1%, I want you to hear this, this is way before Trump. Since 1990, while the top 1% saw their wealth go up by $22 trillion, the bottom half of America actually saw their wealth go down. And today, today, despite huge increases in technology and productivity, the average American worker is making $34 a week less than he or she did 47 years ago after adjusting for inflation. Got that? Better productivity, new technology, and the average American worker is making less in real dollars than they did 47 years ago. We need an economy that works for all of us, not just the 1%. The American people are sick and tired of corporate greed. They are tired of profitable corporations in Michigan, in Vermont, and around this country shutting down, throwing workers out on the street as they move to third world countries where people are paid starvation wages. The American people are tired of corporate CEOs now making 300 times more than their average employees while the CEOs give themselves huge bonuses and golden parachutes. The American people are sick and tired of paying by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs, while the drug companies make billions of dollars in profit year after year. In my view, we can no longer tolerate a rigged system that allows three people, three multi-billionaires to own more wealth than the bottom half of American society. That outrageous level of wealth inequality is grotesque, it is immoral, and it is unsustainable. We can no longer tolerate a rigged tax code that allows billionaires to pay a lower tax rate than nurses, teachers, and truck drivers. Brothers and sisters, now is the time for us to come together and create a government and an economy that works for the children, for the elderly, for working families, not just wealthy campaign contributors.
Now, it is no great secret that Joe Biden and I disagree on a number of issues. But there is also no question that the economic proposals that Joe is supporting are strong and will go a long, long way in improving life for working families. And let me briefly tell you about some of those proposals because I think many Americans are not aware of them. When Joe Biden is president, he will increase the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour. And when we increase that minimum wage to $15 an hour, we will be raising the wages of more than 40 million workers. The American people need a wage increase. They need a $15 an hour minimum wage. And that is what Joe Biden is proposing. And Joe Biden understands that it is totally Okay, I think we got the mic back. So in case you didn't hear me, what I said is that Joe Biden believes in expanding the trade union movement. He understands that we cannot have a strong middle class if we don't have a strong union movement. He is going to make it easier for workers to join unions. And Joe Biden understands that we have got to stop providing corporate welfare to companies that are throwing American workers out on the street and moving abroad. No more corporate welfare for those corporations throwing American workers out on the street. And here is something else that Joe Biden understands, and that is that in the midst of the worst economic crisis in our lifetimes, we need to create millions of good-paying jobs through a massive investment in rebuilding our roads, our bridges, our sidewalks, schools, water systems, and affordable housing. This is America. Our infrastructure should not be collapsing. We can create millions of jobs rebuilding our infrastructure. 
and Joe Biden is going to end the international embarrassment of the United States being the only major country on earth not to provide paid family and medical leave. And when we talk about little kids, Joe understands that our current child care system is totally inadequate and that our children and parents deserve high quality, reliable, and affordable child care. And that's why Joe has proposed universal pre-K education for every three and four year old in the nation. And Joe also understands that we have got to make public colleges and universities and trade schools tuition free for working families. And that we have got to substantially reduce student debt in America. As some of you may recall, last year, I took a trip from Detroit into Ontario, Canada. And I left with a number of diabetics, people who desperately need insulin. And what we found going 15 miles into Canada is that we could buy insulin, the same exact product made by the same exact company in Canada for one-tenth of the price that is paid here in Michigan or in America. Joe Biden understands that we have got to take on the greed, the price fixing, and the collusion of the pharmaceutical industry and end the absurdity of Americans paying by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. As all of you know, the United States is the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all people as a human right. Meanwhile, despite paying almost twice as much per capita for health care as the people of other countries, over 90 million Americans are uninsured or underinsured, and over half a million families go bankrupt, go bankrupt because they cannot afford their medical bills. While Joe and I disagree on the best path to get universal coverage, Joe's proposal will greatly expand access to health care and make it more affordable for tens of millions of people across this country. Joe will lower the eligibility age for Medicare from 65 down to 60. He will expand Medicare to cover dental care, eyeglasses, and hearing aids. My friends, in the wealthiest country in the history of the world, we don't need 90 million people uninsured or underinsured. We don't need a half a million people sleeping out on the street. We don't need 45 million people leaving school with deep student debts. The time is long overdue for all of us, black and white, Latino, Native American, Asian American, gay and straight, people born in this country, people who have come here. The time is now for us to stand together, to tell the corporate elite, <coughs> to tell their lobbyists in Washington that we have had enough of their policies. Health care is a human right, not a privilege. 
One out of five Americans will no longer continue not to be able to afford their prescription drugs under Joe's policies. We will tackle the existential threat of climate change. Take on the fossil fuel industry and create millions of jobs as we transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. Brothers and sisters, this is the most important election, not only in our lifetimes, but in the modern history of this country, perhaps going back to the Civil War and the election of 1864. The stakes involved in this election, not just for us, but for our kids and future generations, are of enormous consequence. In this election, we cannot afford to lose. And I would remind the folks here in Michigan that four years ago, Trump won this state by two-tenths of 1%, less than 10,000 votes. So everybody out there, if you think your vote doesn't count, you are wrong. Register the vote, vote early, let us win this election. Let us elect Joe Biden as president. Let us transform this country. Thank you all very much.